there will come a point in your life where you'll decide that you've had enough of a mass market car. You're tired of your Toyota, you're bored of your Mazda, or you want to move past the Honda in your driveway or something else. And traditionally, when it comes, when that time comes around and you want to buy something posh, the buy-in point has been this, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. The W205 generation that we see here has recently received a facelift where it's gotten slightly sharper looks, a slightly revised interior, but most importantly, it doesn't have what it takes to stand up against competitors like the all-new BMW 3 Series, the sharp Lexus ISF and the highly technical Audi A4. Let's find out. So the W205 generation Mercedes-Benz C-Class that you see here was very recently facelifted and with it there have been some slightly small styling tweaks that have made it look that much sharper and that much more current. Uh, as you can see we've got the AMG line model here, uh, the C300 in fact, where you have that beautiful diamond pin grille, those very complex multi-beam LED headlights, those lovely alloy wheels which are nicked off of the AMG C43 and at the back you have a set of new tail lights, a pair of integrated exhaust exits as well as some fake vents which are fake which means they're kind of not so great but they look good so we'll forgive it. Now while there are a handful of exterior upgrades, it's actually inside where there have been some serious changes. For starters, we have a much wider central infotainment display which looks a lot better than the previous tacked-on additional type. There's also a fully digital instrument cluster for the first time in the C-Class which looks absolutely gorgeous. And for the C300 AMG line that we've got here, we have this wonderful black ash wood trim which just looks it's entirely unvarnished and it's, so it's just open more. It's absolutely gorgeous. On top of that, as part of this face, the C class range now gets the full 64 color ambient lighting setup, which means that you can now have this interior bathed in whatever color you like, but if it's one of that 64 rings. Now, back here, despite the fact that it's got a relatively sloping roof line, and this is after all a compact executive saloon, there's actually a decent amount of room. So this seat is set up in my driving position and I'm not very tall um, and there's plenty of space for knees, plenty of space for feet and because the seat actually sits a little bit further up you can tuck your feet in underneath should you need a little bit more room to stretch out. One thing I don't quite appreciate is the fact that these seat bases are kind of short which means that even for me I don't have a lot of under thigh support. But that said it is a very nice place to sit back here. You have this lovely panoramic sunroof for the C300 as well as three zone climate control so you can have your own air conditioning controls back here and you're still treated to some sand lines as well as these lovely Burmester audio speaker grills. driving the C300 AMG line. Um, it's worth pointing out that, again, this is an AMG line car, not an AMG. A proper AMG would be a C43 or a C63 AMG. So this car gets a 2-litre, 4-cylinder turbocharged engine, which puts out 250-odd horsepower, 350 newton meters of torque, uh, and it is pretty pokey. Uh, if I might mention, it's quite fast this thing. But aside from the engine, which is of course a major highlight in here, there has been a major upgrade uh, with this facelift model that becomes immediately apparent within just a few minutes of driving the car around, and that is the ride. The ride in this car is much, much better than the outgoing pre facelift C300, and the reason for that is the new C300 that I'm driving now comes with airmatic suspension. It's the first application of airmatic suspension on a C-Class and you can really feel the difference. I mean, this car is so smooth. It irons out all but the very worst of bumps. It really does take the edge off and it gives this car this lovely relaxed feel. On top of that, the air suspension also allows this car to have a much wider breadth of ability. So when you use the dynamic select drive mode selector, uh, and move from, say, comfort to sport, you move from this lovely, comfortable cabin into something that is relatively unforgiving, um, pretty stiff, pretty firm, controls uh, 
body movements very well. I'm going to apologize for lighting because I'm about to go underneath a bridge. And we're back. And um, again, it allows the car to properly harness and, or properly embody the mode that it's trying to get into. Uh, as opposed to how it used to be where the C300, no matter what mode you had it in, was just so ridiculously uncomfortable due to its 19-inch wheels. This car still has 19-inch wheels, I should add. Um, but they're nicked straight off of the C43 AMG. Uh, they look great, but it no longer comes with a compromise. So you get a car that looks fabulous and drives really well. Now, the next thing that I want to bring up is the fact that this car, despite the fact that it's very powerful and its suspension gives it a very wide breadth of ability, it isn't exactly the last word in dynamism or rigidity. You can tell that the suspension, or rather the chassis of this car, was not really tuned to be sort of an engaging driver's car. That's not really the point of it. I see the C-Class as a comfortable, small executive saloon that you can drive around town with ease and waft over long distances without much of a care. And even in this car, which has a very aggressive exterior and these lovely seats and this AMG line uh, steering wheel, it still feels very much that way. It may want you or tempt you to drive faster over back roads uh, simply because there's just so much power available. But in terms of the dynamism itself, it doesn't egg you on to go faster. It's not like a, a G23 series, for example. That's a car that keeps telling you, you know, give me a little more. We can do it. Let's go a little faster. This is the kind of car that invites you to slow down, chill out. Kind of what I'm doing right now on these beautiful back roads, which aren't tarred very well, but look very nice. I'm driving on these beautiful back roads. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but it's absolutely gorgeous back here. Beautiful curves, gentle curves, with trees on either side, dense greenery, and the occasional monkey. Um, but I'm driving on these roads because I don't want to drive very fast. I just want to enjoy a nice Sunday drive, sort of chilling out, navigating around said monkeys. Now there's an uncle trying to feed them. Um, because I want to enjoy this drive, because this car is about sort of the gentle drive, taking in the scenery, and that sort of thing. It also means that I get to avoid the highway, which highlights another point. Despite the fact that this car's character suggests that it's very good at covering long distances at high speed and keeping you comfortable throughout, it's missing one very critical aspect that I feel puts it a little bit behind the competition, and that is insulation. This car doesn't really isolate you from the world around you. You don't even have to creep past the national speed limit, as I know many of you do, to discover that this car is actually quite noisy. There's a lot of road noise and wind noise that intrudes into the cabin and sort of bothers your driving experience. Now, the seats are very comfortable. The driving position is excellent. The powertrain, as I mentioned earlier, is very responsive. But as you probably heard, this car is just kind of noisy. I mean, even at 110, there's quite a lot of road roar that comes through and it spoils it. Mercifully, the C300 AMG line, like we're driving here, comes with this gorgeous Burmester audio system, which has these uh, lovely, I believe they're laser cut uh, speaker grills, very pretty to look at, um, but they also provide high quality sound that allows you to sort of drown out any other noises uh, should you need to. But um, there's a narrow point, I'm going to let some of these cars pass first. Um, but without the Burmester audio system, if I'm honest, it does get kind of noisy, a little bit busy, a little bit tiring uh, to drive this car at high speeds. In fact, after having done so uh, within the first couple of days that I drove this car, just you know to give it a thorough test, after that I sort of reverted to type and I haven't really been going past 100 at all, simply because this car appears to not want me to. The sound insulation thing, I keep kind of coming back to this because it is such a major point. I've driven the Audi A4 in the past and that car is whisper quiet, even at high speeds. And the BMW 3 Series, not though not as quiet as the A4, is definitely quieter than this. And I feel like those two cars are a better example of what it means to be a compact premium sedan like this whereas this car i mean it's it, 
I don't know. I've driven Volkswagens that are more insulated than this. And it's, I find it kind of disappointing at 308,000 ringgits, if I'm not mistaken. This car should be able to just keep me away from the outside world when I don't want to hear the outside world. When I'm driving, I want to be in my own little cocoon. I want to be able to enjoy the drive, enjoy my music. This is a big bump. I want to be able to just enjoy the experience. I don't want to be constantly reminded of wind and road and car and all sorts of other things. However, there is one noise that I'm sort of okay with hearing uh, driving this car around, and that's the sound of the engine. Now, even though it is just a two-liter four-cylinder engine, it's not the lusty straight six or one of Merck's older V6s, it does sound rather good. And I'm happy to report that that good sound is all natural. You hear the sound of the turbo, you hear the sound of the induction, you hear all of that nonsense, and there's no fake noises coming through the speakers. This is really important because honestly, fake noises annoy the hell out of me and I know it annoys a lot of people, but I'm happy to report the C300 AMG line doesn't do that. While this car isn't perfect, sure it has its foibles, we can't deny the fact that the Mercedes-Benz C-Class is the most popular Mercedes-Benz saloon that they have in the range. And it is also the most popular compact executive saloon in the Malaysian market. Yes, it's a little bit noisy, but it also looks good from the outside. Yes, it's not a very engaging driver's car, but this interior is absolutely gorgeous. And again, while the Audi A4 is a technical masterpiece, built very well and quiet as the church mouse inside, and the BMW 3 Series has, a re has returned to form in terms of driver engagement, as any true BMW should be, I feel like this C-Class, despite it trying to tell me that it's a sporty, small, premium car, I feel like what it actually is, is a baby S-Class. Because it's very comfortable, it's decent to drive, it's got a responsive powertrain, and it just looks the part. I kind of like this car. It's just a shame that it's really that noisy.